First reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us, and persevere in running the race that lies before us, while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and the perfecter of faith, for the sake of the joy that lay before him. Jesus endured the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right of the throne of good. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel of St. Mark. Chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him, and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials, named Jairus, came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come lay your hands on her, that she may get well and live. He went off with him, and a large crowd followed him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhagus for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors, and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, Your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside, except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead but asleep. And they ridiculed him. Then he put them all out, 
he took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him. He entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha koum, which means, Little girl, I say to you, Arise. The girl, the child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around. At that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Lord of living. He is not the Lord of dead. In fact, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 10, Jesus says, I came to give them life and to give it in abundance. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, during his public ministry, he brought so many dead back to life. He brought so many dead people back to life. We know the famous story of the son of the widow of nine. And we know the famous story of Lazarus who was brought back to life after his death. And in today's gospel, we see how Jesus gives life to Jairus' daughter after her death. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, what is the purpose of bringing these dead people back to life? Jesus, by bringing these dead people back to life, gave a powerful message to his followers and to his disciples. Jesus wanted to tell that he is the giver of life. He is the author of life. Further, he wanted to tell that the death has no dominion. Death has no power over him. Because Jesus knew that after three years, having completed his public ministry, he too will have to go through this door so-called death. Therefore, in order to tell his disciples not to get discouraged, not to get upset, seeing his death, Jesus raised so many dead people from their death. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, while bringing Jairus' daughter back to life, Jesus took St. Peter, St. John, and St. James together with him. Why this speciality? Why he took only these three disciples with him? It is mainly because, my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, these are the three disciples who were with Jesus at his proximity while Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus would be arrested and ultimately put into death. Therefore, by taking St. Peter, James and John together with him and by bringing Jairus' daughter back to life, Jesus wanted to tell these three disciples, Death has no dominion over me. Therefore, don't get discouraged in experiencing and in seeing my death. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we have experienced the death of our loved ones our fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters, our relatives. And we ourselves, one day we have to face this reality as well. Lord says, Jesus says, don't get discouraged. Don't get upset in seeing the death of your loved ones by facing death. Because I am the giver of life. If you remain in me and if you follow me, you will have eternal life. And death would not have any dominion over him.